hello, hello, and welcome to the Mzanti Soccer Show um, on One World Sports Radio, on WSR.com. Um, thank you for joining us. My name is Mpumukani, and I've got Tabang Lito with me. Um, and we discuss all things South African football. This week, we're going to discuss, we're going to recap uh, DSTV Premiership fixtures over the weekend and midweek, and we'll also preview the coming fixtures, and then we'll discuss other news, such as the teams in CAF, how South African team is done in CAF, I think. Um, as Pirates and Sundowns were in on duty and Kaiser Chiefs couldn't get visas to go to Morocco. Um, and then we'll also then discuss the Bongani Zungu situation at Rangers um, and, and, and a little bit of Pagamani Masambi there um, because I think Tabang has, uh, has something uh, coming out of Benny uh, regarding that young star. Thank you for joining us. Remember, please do subscribe to the channel. Please do like and subscribe. But most importantly, you can interact with One World Sports Radio on these different platforms on youtube uh please do like and subscribe for the algorithms so we can come up in your psl searches and other people's psl searches so it's very important that you like and subscribe um as well um t-man welcome uh, well welcome back that uh we missed the net bank cup uh, week week uh, after the aftermath of teams getting knocked out um but how are you doing i'm um, great thanks for a lot of optimism at the moment as you know the the vaccines are starting to arrive in south africa so there's a lot of a good a good buzz in the air at the moment. That's good, team man. Um, so let's start off with the games on the weekend. Um, I'm just gonna put uh, put this up. Um, uh, I'm just gonna put this up. Yeah. So this week, this past weekend, we had Stellenbosch United and Golden Arrows. Um, the Golden Arrows winning that one. They seemingly are looking good for their for value for their money. TTM under the. I don't know, Dylan Kerr's not a coach, but he's a call him a consultant winning 1-0 against Madsburg United. Um, so on Saturday, he had Blim Celtic drawing to Chippewa United. Super Sports United against Cape Town City. That was a very interesting game. I love that one. Um, and there was a lot of youngsters uh, being played uh, for Super Sports United in that one. And then Morocco Swallows and Amazulu was the draw on the weekend. On Sunday, T-Man Swallows drawing another game. They've drawn four in, in a while. What other... What what do these results tell you um, when we came out of this weekend? Um, it just shows you the up and down nature of the PSL at the moment in goal. Um, you can never really, especially the teams in the bottom half of the table, um, towards the middle end of the table, you can never really predict their results. Um, it's always ups and downs, which shows them for how evenly matched the teams are in the, in the PSL at the moment. Um, looking at that Stellenbosch versus Golden Arrows fixture in goal, there is an Argentinian at the moment who, who supplies his trade. Stellenbosch, that's uh, Mendieta. Mendieta, oh yes. He scored a cracker of a goal there. Um, but as you said, in Port Golden Arrows have really, really done well this season. Um, it's a team with very little resources at their disposal under the guidance of Mandan Nagazi there in KZN and Port. They are really, really doing well at the, in the top of, of, of the table, really, really showing uh, their resoluteness as a team. Um, Port Marisburg United are really struggling at the moment. You thought with the introduction of Mirindor, we would have seen a bit of change in their fortunes in Port. He came in like a house on fire, beating Kaiser Chiefs um, Judea, with Judas Massimo Siamid, these early old goals. But it seems that the, the, team has, the team has dropped form recently in their most recent games in Port. Uh, Takuma, TTF, Mpoh, the team, one of our favorite teams, and we love analyzing and talking about them. Tawam Yamani, he used to play his trade for Super Sport United. Very, very good striker. I think he was just a bit unlucky at Supersport. He scored the goal there in Port. Cracker of a free kick. Great goal for, there from Talbot So that's his second, that's his second in, in, in two games? Yes, you recall him. Because he, he scored actually, against Supersport United. He took Supersport United out of the of the Net Bank Cup in Port. Chakuba, mm. ever since the change in leadership, change in management, the team is looking very, very easy. Well, well, let, let's be serious. Let, let's be clear. Not change in the bench. Change in the management at the top. At the top, um, as, as you'll know, Chakuma, uh, the, the, the previous owner, sold his status to a new incoming businessman in Paul. Um, but the team is really doing well at the moment in Paul. As you said, Chakuma have a lot of good players at their disposal. And once they can find their rhythm in Paul and play well together, these boys will cause magic in Paul. Remember, you've got Tawara Khale there, you've got Tabong Yaman in Paul. They recently signed Tukalo Ranti in Paul. Tukalo Ranti used to play Bafana Bafana striker, mm. very good striker. He played in the EPR for Bournemouth. Unfortunately, as of late, he's really... Um, struggled with this football, but he is. Um, poor. That's the thing with South African football at the moment. Um, poor. A lot of players who are hungry to, to, to reassert themselves are, are going to do well at the moment. In poor. Let me move to Saturday's fixtures. Bloom Celtic up against Chippewa United. In poor. Um, I watched that game um, at my grandmother's house in Rustenburg. Um, the, the, the pitch was, was, was uh, 
disastrous to 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 put it to put it mildly um put mm. a, pitch of, a pitch of a PSL standard. Um, and Chipper United, you could see that coach Dan Malisela was was a bit uh, disappointed with that pitch in Paul. And what happened in that game was that a red card was given to the Celtic players, and Chipper had a chance to they had a chance to dominate and, and proceedings in Paul. But just because of the, how the pitch was, they couldn't really assert themselves um, there in Paul. Uh, Super Sport United up against Cape Town City, as you said, important. A lot of youngsters are playing for Super Sport United. Kampani Lungu, um, Super Sport United have have the likes of uh, Sipom Bule. I've always spoken very highly of the mm -hmm. the park in Paul. But one thing that Super Sport United really get right in Paul is that they've got a very very good blend of youngsters and experience in Paul. Um, in, in that game, um, I must give props to Ron Williams in Paul. That 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 two one scoreline is not a is not reflective of the game of play. But there were uh, almost three chances in the last ten minutes in Port where uh, Cape Town City could have could have won the game in Port outright in Port. But Ronald Williams mm. was brilliant. He was oh man, he was like it was it was unbelievable. It it, it it's like he's it's like this season Ronald Williams has stepped up his game um so much that. Um, you know, I remember I was having an argument with someone on Twitter about whether Ronwin should be in Zanzi's number one, and 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 uh, and we were told that no, Kunes technique is great. Um, he's 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 better uh, as a as, as as a keeper, and he will always be in Zanzi's number one. But I do think Ronwin's taken a step and closed that gap, if not surpassed him with this. The one thing I like about that Super Sport game. Is is that um, is that they 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 have these youngsters? Luke Fleurs is a youngster. Um, they played this kid uh, named Jesse Robert Don. I think he is uh, twenty years old. Um, he came on uh, towards the end, I think, for Lucky Muhumi. Um, he's a defensive midfielder. Um, he he plays for he played for Ubuntu FC, um, who were in the Glad Africa Championship last year. I think they got relegated out of Glad Africa last year or the year before. Um, and, and Ubuntu is a really, really lovely club in Cape Town. And, and he's now making waves in the PSL, um, is, is John, uh, Jesse Don. And then on top of that, obviously, if you look at that side, they've got uh, Jamie Weber. Um, I like, I like Ditlokwe a lot. Um, only problem is, um, only problem is that, um, uh, he's 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 a Botswana international. I would have loved for him to be a, a South African because he's a really, really good centre back. 100% to And as you said, um, props to all of those youngsters that you mentioned in But what I said earlier on was that they've got a great blend of youngsters and experience in Po. Bongani Kumalo in He was one of mm. 10 years ago, Bongani Kumalo was the best defender in South Africa. Went on to fly his tray for Tottenham Hotspurs in the EPL in He's now come in, um, still showing his class as a defender, um, showing his experience, guarding the youngsters there at Super Sport And who scored the winner? Tam Sanja Gawuza in They call him the Bulldogs. <laughs> he is... Uh, Ganda, uh, Ganda. Kanda Kanda Mpo, he's really done well in poor um, for himself as of late in poor. Um, he's really shown South Africans in the past three, four, five years in poor, um, what a great striker he is in poor. Really pounces on those loose balls in the last third there. And uh, he scored the winner there for Super Sport. Um, but in, in that, mm -hmm. the last game is Morocco Swallows versus Amazulimpo. Amazulimpo. They call it the, the, the battle of the Prasa Fandika coaches in poor. Brendan Tritter up against the younger Benny McCarthy in poor. Um, mm -hmm. Very, very evenly matched game for both sides. The, probably, in my view, the most energetic sides in the PSL at the moment. It was in, mm. in um, It could have gone either way, but props to both teams for giving us a classy display. Unfortunately, we could not see goals in that encounter. Um, Morocco Solis did. Um, uh, they, they managed to uh, break a record for the first time ever um, in the PSL. The team, a team that's coming up from the Glad Africa Championship, has gone unbeaten for the first round. So props to Brendan Tuta and his troops there uh, from Morocco Swallows. And, 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 and what you mean by first round is the first half of the fixtures. 100%. The first 15 games, as you know, for the yes. 50 games in the PSL. So the first 15 games uh, in terms of first round of fixtures, 100%. Yes. So speaking about unbeaten teams... Um, uh, Mami Lodi Sundance and Orlando Pirates, and you can see Kaiser Chiefs is also not there because there's five fixtures, and then obviously, there's the other three are, are, are would have those teams. Obviously, Kaiser Chiefs uh, uh didn't play this weekend in 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 CAF because they didn't get any visas, but Pirates went to Botswana and they scored three goals against uh Joanne Galaxy, um, uh, there in Botswana, which I think I, I think Tyson scored that game, um, which is which is really fascinating to see. Um, uh, there and really good for him to see for, for that he that he scored a goal. Um, 
on, on the other side, Sundowns as well uh, coming out with 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 the win. Team man, how are our teams doing in CAF? Um, in, in 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 the CAF Champions League. Um, for, as you know, for over the past five years, both uh, I mean, let me let me not say five to seven years, both Orlando Pirates and Mamelodi Sundowns have represented us with class in the CAF Champions League. And for you, you'll recall, um, Orlando Pirates. Uh, went to the CAF Champions League a couple of seasons ago, played against Al Ahli in the final. They were very, very close to winning uh, against Al Ahli. Unfortunately, they couldn't win. Um, and, for, and as you know, Mamiru Sanlam's class beats for themselves. They won the Champions League. I stand to it was 2016, the, 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 the Golden Squad, Percy Tao, Bongani Zungu, Keegan Dolly, um, Kam um, a very, very, some Sanlam's have they continued that form for, that they've shown us over the past five, seven years. Kaza Chiefs, <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Kaiser Chiefs have not shown us the same form, but for the first time ever, which is quite a shock this season because their form in the PSL mm. is absolutely, uh, it's uh, it's lethargic, if, 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 if I can use the right words. But they're not really, they haven't really shown us um, the Kaiser Chiefs that we know, uh, that, we, that we know to, to be dominant in the PSL. But, but all of a sudden, mm. they do well in the, in the CAF Champions League. But, which begs, I mean, I've asked you the question, boys. Let's look at who they played early on. I think they played two teams from Southern Africa, and you know very well that sometimes in the CAF Champions League, the, the tougher fixtures come from the East African, West African, Guinea, um, the, the mm. Egyptian, Tunisians. That's where the Moroccans, that's where you you, you play the tough games. So maybe Kaiser Chiefs have an easier path to, to going to that, uh, the, the, the group stages. And I was really, really keen on watching them play against uh, Why Dad Casablanca. The, why that Casablanca was one of the best teams in Africa. Sundowns knows them very well. In, in, in past season, Sundowns has managed to beat them. They've managed to beat Sundowns as well. It's, it's almost into in stuff. Why that Casablanca, one of the most, most supported teams in Africa. I was really, really looking forward to that clash. Because Kaiser Chiefs' form hasn't been the best. But in Africa, they've won their games. So I really wanted to see... How, I mean, if I was white, white at Casablanca, regardless of visas or everything, I was going to say, come into the country, but we want to play Kaiser Chiefs. Because, um, but, I mean, the form uh, of Kaiser Chiefs has, has really, really been mediocre, to say the least, this season. Um, but I, 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 I've been <laughs> very well, Mpo. I've been saying, I'm expecting, I was expecting a four goal, five goal uh, in, 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 the, in, in white at Casablanca um, beating with a, with a five goal, four goal. Um, um, gap between the two teams look i think it's a blessing in disguise in this in the season for kaiser chiefs because it, it it pushes the game back yes it might create fixture congestion but i don't think um i honestly do think it it, it gives gavin hunt a, a a lifeline when it comes to kaiser chiefs because he can say look in the league we're not doing quite well but in the champions league we are we are there and thereabouts um yes they have a tough group and and, and that's something that you you you'll have to contend with, um um, you know, because obviously um that's what it is because you you've got you've got Weedad um as I look at the groups here you've got Weedad you've got Horoya you've got Petro uh, Petro de Luanda and Horoya Horoya won their game against Petro de Luanda um and and so that's something that 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 that, that Gavin Hunt will have to will have to consider um but I think he must go go for broke in that in that in that thing the only problem that I have. Team man, and and I don't want to talk about Kaiser Chiefs because I I I really, you know, it, it, it does frustrate me to watch um Gavin Hunt to go through this because he's chopping and changing goalkeepers. We do the, he 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 confirmed yesterday that Mbasele is now the club captain, but uh Kuneo was club captain the, the the year before. So is there is there some is, are there some is he having problems with some senior players? Um also the penalty taking situation is an issue. Um, and 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 he got knocked out of the Nedbank Cup by a, a second uh, by, by a Glad Africa Championship team. It's 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 just not working out. And and I don't know if I don't know what the Mutawungs are thinking, but this this Champions League really presents an opportunity for him to stake a claim. If Chiefs can get into the semi-finals, that makes you that gets you into the well the quarterfinals that gets you in the top eight of Africa, and you can do whatever you want from there. Um, and and your brand is 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 well known across Africa, and you can try and endear yourselves back to the fans with the Champions League run. The only problem is that I don't trust the, I don't think he has the trust of the players. I don't think he can give he can put up at Kaiser Chiefs eleven 
and he can say, I'm happy that this team can go out and win. Bo, let me ask you a question, Bo. If you are mm -hmm. struggling to beat Riches Bay FC, which is a Glad Africa first first division team, Bo, if you are struggling to beat Amazulu, Bo, if you are struggling to beat teams like, such as Marysburg United, which is sitting at the bottom of the of the um, South African Premiership, what are you going to do with clubs like Wydad Casablanca, Horoya, and Petro du, du, du Luanda from Angola? Bo? Those are those are giant those are giant clubs in Port Africa. Bo. Those mm. are clubs we. Paul, you just mentioned the name, Paul, and your your heart skips a beat, Paul. These teams, Paul, have 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 gone. I mean, their journey towards coming into into the the, the group stages has been almost a smooth transition. Of course, there was a bit of um, there were a couple of tough games encounters that they that they faced, Paul. But Paul, these teams over the past five seven years, they've they've really established themselves in Africa. Paul, Kaiser Chiefs, and Paul, I was, and it's, it's it's interesting, Paul, because at the moment, Paul, Kaiser Chiefs um, haven't gone out of the MTN end. Having gone out of the Net Bank Cup, essentially, for um, they, they're arguably out of out of. There's only one cup which they can really win this season. And for I'm writing them off in terms of the South African Premiership. The only cup that they can win is the Cap Champions. This is the Champions League, yeah. And that's that's their only chance at silverware. For. And maybe maybe for when maybe once the players kind of realize that, it, it, but we, we're not expecting them to win the the Cap Champions League. But at least. You know, fly the South African flag up high, and forth. show the passion of South African football. Show, show go to White at Casablanca and, forth, and, and, and and give them give them a battle on their hands and forth. Uh, because Kaiser Chiefs does have the players and forth. Remember, that we've always said on the show and forth, this is the team that won they, that lost the league in the last in the second half of their last game in that last season uh, last year and forth, at mm. the Bitbit Stadium and forth, against Baroque FC. They, they, they lost the, the PSL in that game last season and forth. Not enough changed. Within the team, it's still yeah, the same. no, yes, mm. yes, team man, I, I I do get you. Let's let's try and move on and 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 get through. Sundowns obviously won this weekend against Ali Lal. They won two 0 uh, Musa Libusa scoring and Kermit Rasmus scoring, and obviously um uh, 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 um uh, Orlando Pirates. Um, I think Orlando Pirates. If if uh, I think they would want to have a very long run in calf. and and obviously Sundowns. They're the most. They're the two most obviously accomplished sides. Uh, South African sides in Africa. So um, I'm expecting a very long run from this Sundowns team. They look very strong. Um, and, and it feels like Pito set them up for for for, for, for African glory um, by him leaving. Normally, you know, when coaches, when long-standing coaches leave, uh, teams tend to just have a dip in form and have a bad season after that. The Sundowns team look good in the PSL, in the APSA Premier, in the DSTV Premiership, I beg your pardon, DSTV Premiership. They look good. Um, in 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 the net bank, they look good for money. Um, in 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 in, in the CAF Champions League, um, and and it's 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 just it's the only problem that might put them that might set them back is um, this whole visa issue and travel restrictions to South Africa because of 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 the COVID the the, the South Africa the, it's 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 SARS version uh, VY SARS five hundred one VY uh, uh, Y version two, which is. Uh, they nickname it the South African variant. You don't want to use that, but because of this variant, um, not a lot. Which is why South Africa Chiefs couldn't go to Morocco. The a match against Algeria in, in Algeria also has been postponed. Um, so there's a lot of things that are going to happen that might derail Sundowns and and any African team, any South African teams, well, the three big teams uh, progress into into Africa. I know CAF is looking for neutral venues, and they should. If not. Um, I don't know how they're going to split it, but um, T-Man, let's, let's, do you think, like, T-Man, do you think, like, Sundowns can actually win the Cap Champions League? Let's, let's actually go there, because I, I, I think they, they might be able to. Important, Mr. Remember that Sundowns um, has a squad of players and for, of about, um, I mean, they can feel, in terms of class, they can feel almost two different sides, and they can, Almost uh, beat any team in the South African Premiership. Import. They've got classy players. Import. They've got they've got experience. Import. They've got players in the form of Nascimento, international player, and he's really um, dom uh, exerting his dominance at, um, in the in the centre back role. They've got Sirino up front, also international player. Import. He was wanted by Al <laughs> uh, towards the beginning of the season. Import. Um, they've got players such as Shalulila, who's high on confidence, arguably in my view um, the best player in the PS. So at the moment this season, um, I'm on par with Ronald Williams, who we spoke of a couple of a couple of minutes ago. 
So the question that you asked me, yes, of course they can. Sometimes they've done it before. They know how to do it. They haven't changed a lot in their structures. Um, the players who've lifted the cup, um, some of the more experienced players from Pokekana, Daniel, Daniel, Dennis Onyango, those players are still there for 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 Mamelu Sundowns and for they've got players who've gone who've gone into a long stretch into the CAF Champions League and for gone and, and lost out in the semi-finals against the your likes of White Casablanca, Raja Casablanca, Al Akli for you know for and Sundowns and for is a team where when you mentioned Sundowns and for in with uh, the African uh, teams up, up up north in Egypt and for they know exactly which team mm-hmm. you're talking about. When you mention Sundowns in the African continent, you know, teams uh, such as Tipi Mazembe, Al Hilal, um, Horoya, they know Sundowns. So, of course, of course, Sundowns can can win the Champions League. Before. I mean, but in, in terms of look at the PSL log at the moment, Sundowns has got 36 points in 16 games. No, let, let's normally, in terms of winning the PSL, before, you have to normally 60 points gets you there. Before. So, in terms of a trajectory, if you had to look at a trajectory, they are, they are tracking higher than that. Before. In terms of the yeah, 72, points, which is a record. They've already passed the 30, the 30, the 30 points mark at halfway. So they 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 they're well on track to, to win the South African Premiership. They're five points ahead in terms of the other teams, and they've won three games in a row. So Sundowns are really uh they they're on fire at the moment. And okay. they're both, remember, both, yes. unfortunately, with Mamuli Sundowns, and, and very, very unfortunate for is that this past season and for two of their former players in the form of Anil and Monga, and also Cheka Madisha passed away in Port. Um, so w- w- what better way to, to, to remember and, and honor your past uh, soccer uh, your past teammates by winning um, arguably the best uh, best cup on the African continent? Yeah, well, yeah. they've got well, one red block in front of them, T-Man, uh, and that is Al Ahli, coached by their former coach. Um, that is Bizo Musmani, and they had a great weekend in the CAF, in not the CAF, the Club World Cup. So I'm hoping for that final, if, if they can make it work. Um, so now let's move on to this midweek's fixtures. Uh, I just want to have a look at these two. Um, Sundowns played. Um, they won, they beat Baroque FC 2-0. And then Kaiser Chiefs losing to Amazulu in the last minute. It was a shambles at the back. Um, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was diabolical for Kaiser Chiefs. But Mamelodi Sundowns is pulling away 2-0 winners over the weekend. Really, really... Clinical game. Um, for our, uh, the Kaiser Chiefs game. Oh man! Um, as you said, Paul, you 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 said the right words. The diabolical, Paul. Um, the starting lineup. I could count seven defend, defensive players from Kaiser Chiefs in that starting lineup. Paul. At home, playing at home at FNB Stadium, and you've got seven defensive players in your starting lineup. Uh, Itumelo Kune is is low in confidence. He's a shadow of his former past, and Paul. Um, a lot of mistakes were made at the back. The first goal, a couple of mistakes as well. Amazulu, we're not sitting back. Mpoh, and it's, it's, that's something that you see a lot in teams at the moment when they play against Kaiser Chiefs. Mpoh. There's not that thing of teams are, are scared of Kaiser Chiefs anymore. Teams teams go to Kaiser Chiefs and we'll be like, look, man, we've lost three on the truck. Here's a chance for us to get three points. Um, but in the <laughs> early game, in the early minutes, Augustine Mulenga had the confidence to shoot a ball from outside of the park and hit the crossbar. Mpoh. Amazulu hit the crossbar twice. Mpoh. They hit the crossbar twice. And for and they scored the goals that they scored. Kaiser Chiefs didn't score a goal in regulation play. They had to score through a penalty. And for, so, mm. um, Benny McCarthy, uh, you know, for, uh, in terms of uh, legacy, a couple of seasons ago, all the way back in 1997, and for, uh, a team called Seven Stars was coached by Gavin Hunt, and he mm. put out a 17 year old youngster called Benny McCarthy. And in, to, in yesterday's game, and for, Gavin Hunt was coaching Kaiser Chiefs. And he he was coaching against the youngster that he put on and 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 showed South African football to in Benny McCarthy for but Benny McCarthy was able to put one over his former coach um, and former mentor in, in, in Gavin Hunt. And also with yeah, Benny as coach, I don't think he's ever he's ever lost to Gavin Hunt, which is also something that's important. But let's talk about Benny a little bit and Amazulu who have been coming up. Um, Benny ever since Benny has uh, has joined. Amazulu have only lost two games. They've played 12. They've lost two, one, six, and drawn four. They currently have four wins and five, probably with Mamelodi Sundowns, the best team in the last five games in the in, in the DSTV Premiership. They've moved up uh, the log. I think they're in sixth position. Um, and and, and, and they, they're tearing down against the teams in front of them. 
Um, we spoke about Benny's influence last last time out. It's it's just seemingly it's working now. You know, they're scoring goals, they're defending. They went so when Benny came in, they bought a they got a goalkeeper in Veli Motwa. They went and got um, they went and 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 got uh, Sebonga Nomvete to be the striker coach. They also brought uh, Vasilis Manusakis in, and uh, it's really helped um, Amazulu just turn things around. They were looking very bad. Um, like a bottom half team before Benny joined. And now all of a sudden, they're top of the table, they're chasing. And most importantly, uh, yeah, most importantly, they're chasing the the, the, the top spots and, and, and the Africa positions, which are still wide open um, with them. I think they're at 26 points. Um, and, and, and I think Swallows and, and the others are, are just around uh, 30 points there. So they They've got, they've got, they've got some movement, and they're moving in the right direction. So they're 25 points. They are six points behind uh, SuperSport in number two, and uh, th- uh, and four points behind Swallows in the third spot. And that's a CAF, uh, that's a CAF Cup, uh, that's a CAF uh, Confederations Cup uh, spot. Um, team man, have like I've been impressed by Amazulu, regardless of what Kaiser Chiefs were doing. Amazulu was just really, really impressive yesterday. 100 percent important we spoke about it earlier on in, uh, in our previous shows and but sometimes important when you when you bring in a fresh ideas in an organization it comes from the top down and um in, in the form of sandy lezungu he came in and bought amazulu really from their previous owners the sokela's the sokela family in kzn he brought in benny mccarthy he brought uh um as you said important they've got a striker in the form of siabonga nombete siabonga nombete arguably the best uh striker to apply his trade in the psl um, the all-time leading goal scorer in the PSL. They've got a very, very youthful um, coaching um, management team with, uh, led by Benny McCarthy. So Benny McCarthy, he's able to motivate the players very, very well. Um, you saw the way they played against Kaiser Chiefs yesterday. They were energetic. They were they were attacking. Um, they 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 were they were speedy. They were moving fast. And they were moving the ball very quickly. Um, for they 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 weren't sitting back. Um, they're really attacking. And they've also got a, a very very good blend of youngsters and experience important experience in the form of Latorlo Majoro important. Majoro is a very very great striker um he played for Amazulu a couple of years back um he, he he's, he's a well traveled well traveled player in the PSL he's come back and he's now bringing in his experience over the past few years um, and helping the young players around him important. um I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by the following players from Amazulu Augustin Mulenga um Bongin Tuli the other striker uh, Latorlo Majoro uh I'm also impressed with uh, the midfielders, Luguyo Mamelampo, um, he was out an outcast at Orlando Pirates and has been given a new lease of life at Amazulu. He's playing almost, mm. he's, 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 he's over the age of 13, Paul, but he's playing like a 21-year-old. Um, then you've also got the likes of Tolam Lambu, who's also in the middle of the park. And Paul, I mean, a couple of seasons ago, he played for Brisbane Vist and went on to Orlando Pirates. Very, very cross midfielder. One of, he's one of Soweto's finest, and Paul, they call him 10-10 uh, in Soweto. And Paul. A very very good uh, midfielder, and so, but they've got a very very good squad. And for, as you said, for, it's, it's, it's it comes from the top down. And for, for so Sandy Lezungu, um, very very uh, well esteemed businessman, has really. Um, but I, I, look, I watch the games. He's at all of the games. And for, he's watching the games. He's he's supporting his team. Um, he's supporting Benny. He's given Benny almost a, a free reign. And for, Benny also for, he he's, he's not, he he doesn't exert fear onto his players. And for, he's always optimistic in his in his post match interviews. Um, win or lose, he's always optimistic and poor. He's always got a smile on his face. And, and that's the kind of coach that you want to play for. And poor. Um, one way you know that if I make a mistake, you know, he, this is a coach that will back me. And, poor. Uh, and he's, that's what, that's what uh, Benny's always said in his post-match interviews. He said, when he arrived, and poor, the players were low in confidence. They were scared. And poor. They were scared to express themselves. And Benny has brought in that culture and poor, of, of, of allowing the players to express themselves. Relax. Play play to your heart's beat. Um, poor, play attacking enterprising football, free-flowing football, and that's what Amazulu have shown us in for. Um, I mean, we, all, we were all a bit skeptical when when they did, uh, unfortunately, uh, demote uh, former uh, coach Ayanda uh, Ayanda Jamini to the MDC team, but it's it actually proved a masterstroke of genius from Sandy Lezungu, who appointed Benny McCarthy. Here's one other thing. I know we spoke about it. I want, to, I want you to talk about it very quickly. Um, Benny McCarthy has there's a quote on Far Post um, talking about Benny McCarthy, McCarthy speaking about Pagamani Masambi. He says this: If you have talent in abundance, you have to match it with hard work. I'm not saying he's not working hard. 
There's players who are working hard, and that's why they find themselves in the team. If you're not in the team, you're not doing enough. I think I said this a while back. T-Man, what do you what do you make of, of, of the statement from Benny McCarthy? Uh, um, it's, it's a testament to what Coach Rulani Mukwena said when, when unfortunately, he was asked as to why is Pagamani Matami moving on load from Mamuli Sambi. And he said something almost the same uh, same line of words whereby his words exactly was talent alone is not enough in Paul. And, and and it's something that we've also said, you've also said it to me when I've when I've when I've, when I've pressed you about it. It's it's purely that people talent alone is not enough in South African football. There are so many talented players that we've had in the past few years in who could have gone on to play for the Tottenham Hotspurs, for the Everton's, for the Manchester United's in but they just didn't have that discipline, that hard work, that hard that work ethic in Paul. I mean, look at a player like Percy Dow in Paul. Started out, went on to with play for with Bank Spurs in the national first division was humble um was patient he he he, he worked and for he went on loan time and time again and for he's been patient he's been persistent and for and look where he is at the moment and for. so that's as 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 the coach has said and for talent alone is not enough in South African football you need to put in a little bit more you need to work that extra mile and for and that's that's what we see him for, unfortunately for at the moment uh it's, 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 a, it's a sad one mm-hmm. for, because we've got a lot of talent in Pagamani Mashambi He's a generational talent, also discovered by Gavin Hunt. And I really thought that the move for him to Amazon to be guided by Benny McCarthy, Sabah Anambete, and Monique Joseph would have been a master stroke of genius. And it would have been a, t- a time for him to, to kind of uh, play his way back into Wafana Wafana, but unfortunately, it hasn't translated mm-hmm. to that. Yes. Um, T-Man, uh, I, I want to talk about some of the interesting things that happened this week. It was deadline day this week. Um, and we know that the, 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 the January window was extended um, to, to, to now. Um, I know Mamelodi Sundowns got Rusheen direct into, um, into, into uh, Cloak Up uh, from Maritzburg United. Maritzburg let go of Rusheen direct. And uh, I think it's Pohisho Sokona. Um, they also got Keletsa Sifama on loan from Kaiser Chiefs. Um, uh, there were other moves. Uh, there weren't that many moves in this in this window, apart from Justin Shonga going from TTM to Cape Town City. Um, was, there, was there anything uh, of note that that you saw in this window, or was it just? Uh, it felt like it was really quiet because of of of, of teams that already sorted themselves out and, and all this COVID talk, and, and and COVID as well, kind of stopping all the moves because we were expecting a lot of moves, uh, but nothing happened. One hundred percent. It was probably the most quiet. <laughs> PSL transfer window I've, I've ever seen or I've ever witnessed before. Not a lot of moves before. You can count the moves with with almost one with with two with, with two with two hands and There were probably ten moves in total within this within this uh, PSL transfer window before. And it's it's yeah there wasn't anything um, to to write home about. Justin Shonga moving to the big ones was definitely Justin Shonga moving to Cape Town City and also Rushin Durek moving from Marisburg um, United to mm-hmm. Madrid Sunhouse. You will note him for he is he is a part of the Bafana squad at the moment. And uh, many people are saying it is a replacement for Muchaka Madisha. Madisha was solid at the back for Marie Sundowns, and they, I'm, I'm sure it's them just strengthening and plugging that uh, unfortunate gap um, that, yes. that, 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 that well, opened up to well, his passing away. Well, a player like Rushin Derek was supposed to actually leave in the in the in the early transfer for the the, the August transfer, and I just was really surprising that he, he hadn't gotten an offer yet. Um, yeah. move, speaking of, of moves, um, there's some uh, things happening in your at your favorite club there. Uh, Dylan Kirk obviously left, uh, got fired mm-hmm. from from Black Leopards, and he was spotted at at, at TTM training. Um, and and the new owner saying that no 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 no, it, the, there's no coaching change there. He's just a consultant. Um, there have been a few teams that have used consultants um, who somehow somewhere when the results weren't going on. Uh, the consultant ended up in the coach's seat. Another team from Limpopo going through some other interesting things as well, hired Kostadin Papic today um, as not as their coach, but as their technical director. Another situation where if Lusano Losiema is not working out, Kostadin Papic will probably be uh, coaching the team. Um, it's interesting to see Papic back, but Timon, what do you make of these of these two moves? But you know, I always say to you, but there's some clubs in Port where you get hired in Port. Do not get permanent accommodations in Port. <laughs> Make sure you get 
at least Simba, which is a very, very flexible exit close Simba, because uh, you never know what happens. Teams like Chippewa United, Black Lewis, TGM, you never know how long you can last. But you never know as to how long you can last at those clubs. Simba. They're always chopping and changing coaches. Simba. And yeah, you're right. Simba. The structures are all very, very, very weird. Simba. You get someone as a con. As a consultant, is he is he the coach? Is he the consultant? What's going on? For and those are the kinds of things that you ask yourself. For. And I think it's just it's just it's probably just teams trying to make sure that they that they uh, manage their budgets very well. And for by bringing in bringing in an assist a, a former player who can coach on a on a very flexible salary, and then bringing in an experienced coach in a in a much more flexible role as a consultant. For. And that's what I think it is at the end of the day. For um. Yeah, I mean, um, um, these teams, it's very difficult um, for them to get good results. And te- their managers are very, very jittery uh, in terms of not getting good results. And that is why they, they, they're not afraid to pull the trigger in terms of firing and chopping and changing coaches at any time. Um, I look at mm. Chippewa United. Look, I look at uh, I look at Chippewa United. I look at Black Labels. I look at TTM. For four, four bad results. And you know very well for that. You, you, you are in a bit of danger as a coach. And it, 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 it's, it's warranted because I guess the teams really want a bit of stability. Import. They want to make sure that they are in the PSL next season. Yes, um, fighting for that status is very important. Black Leopards are currently at the bottom. TTM got their way out of that uh, promotion and relegation spot by beating Maritzburg. We showed you that result earlier on. Um, T-Man, before we go into the fixtures of the week, what do you make of the Bongani Zungu situation? Um, at, at Rangers in Scotland, he was part of the five players who had a party and were videotaped or whatever it is against COVID protocols. Um, it's made it's turned the country into a stir because even the Prime Minister, okay, not the Prime Minister, the First Minister of Scotland spoke about it and said it doesn't matter if they're soccer players, or whatever, they still need to be punished. They are being taken out of the first team because they're isolating, so it's not as though they're being taken out for good. Um, but many people are saying that it's probably the last la- we, we've seen the last of Bangani Zungu in a Rangers jersey. Remember, he did go there on loan. Yeah, but the tough one, well, because yes, he is on loan at, 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 at Rangers and for, and as you know, the, the season is the the, the, the the Scottish season doesn't have a lot of games in it, and for, so it is drawing to uh, an end. Um, I think there are about five, I'm, I'm not sure. I looked at it this season, just a couple of games, a handful of games left. And it would have been a great opportunity for Bongani to exert himself and, and put him um, top of uh, Steve Gerrard's transfer list because he is there on loan. And, for, and you'll call him for that. His team, his original team, Amiens in France, got relegated from the, the France Liga One, League One last season. And for, so this was a golden opportunity for him. He's mm. playing Europa League football. And for, um, but I don't know. There's two ways to it. And for, we are all human and we do make mistakes sometimes. And for, uh, and it sometimes, I mean, you find that it was just he just got caught, and, for, and it's so unfortunate because I I, I checked BBC Sport this um, this morning, and, for, and in terms of the headline and the picture that's there, I don't see four other players. I see Bongani Zungu's uh, picture there. And for, I don't I don't know I don't see the four other players in terms of the headline that we see the picture. It's Bongani Zungu. And, yeah, but do you know how? Uh, okay, uh, let me just wrap up quickly, but. Mm-hmm. At the moment, it's unfortunate because as South Africans, we're really hungry to see our players doing well in Europe because there's not a there's not a lot to for. He's one of three, one of three slash four players that are that are playing at the highest level of leagues in Europe in the with his former teammates in Tau and Keegan Dwali. So every time we see him play um, in, in 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 Europe, we we always are proud of him. Mpo. And it's just unfortunate that this has happened in But sometimes in we are human, we do make mistakes in I mean, I mean, I'm sure we, we see ourselves, our peers in are have broken some COVID protocols in We are human, we do make mistakes in but he should I, I think he should have known better in knowing that he's on loan, knowing, knowing that he's got a he's got a he's fighting for a contract and trying to impress Steven Gerrard. I mean, as a mid central midfielder, who what what, what better coach to be coached by in, in Stevie G? Mm-hmm. I read a line in that BBC article and he said, I, I feel let down by my players. And that line really hit me. I feel let down by my players. That, that, that line hit me. No, and, and he's competing with a lot of players in that midfield. It's not as though he's he's, he's in the matchday squad week in and week out. 
Um, and, and, and that's the disappointing factor for me is that I, I get the BBC picture will have Zoom with their Yes, they're trying to play on people's emotions because somehow when things go wrong and there's three white players and one black player, the black player's photo is going to be the one that's there. It, it needs to change. It's wrong. And, and, and they need to be called out for it. But the British, from a Bongani's, the British media doesn't play for it. Yes, we know. Um, black player, like Raheem Sterling's been on the back end of so many bad things, but the good things that Marcus Rashford does gets a byline at the bottom. Um, and, and, and so that, that for me is the reason why, like I don't take British media uh, a lot. I, I just feel as though um, Bongani needed to be careful and, 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 and we need to get to a point where our players need to understand that yes, you're human, uh, but you need to, there, there's a certain level of maturity. There's a certain level of, of growing up that you need to do to be able to play in the high leagues, to be consistently there because the best uh, ability that you can have at those leagues is availability. It's not talent, it's not ability, it's actually availability. If you are available at all times and you work hard, you will play. And for me, that's where I think Bangani Zungu just dropped the ball a bit. Yes, we're human and we forgive him. Uh, and I hope he gets a game time once he's finished his isolation because he has to go through a two-week isolation. Um, they still have Europa League games. They're still playing the Scottish Premiership. So let's see if maybe Bongani might get a game or two and, and Gerard will forgive. But they said that they'll talk to each player one by one and, and, and see what it is. So that meeting is going to be very important for him to be able to articulate and show some maturity, some remorse, and, and, and try and do better the next time. Um, T-Man... Uh, let's go into this weekend's fixtures, uh, DSTV Premiership fixtures. We've got um, uh, five games this weekend. Um, you've got Kaiser Chiefs versus Supersport United, Chipper United versus TS Galaxy, Baroka FC versus Black Leopards, Chakuma versus Stellenbosch, Cape Town City versus Madsburg. As I look at this team, man, there's two games that I'm looking at. Uh, actually, th yeah, two, three games that I'm looking at here. Um, it's that Kaiser Chiefs versus Supersport. Well, look, every game seems to have a have an implication either at, the, at both ends of the of the of the, of the league, but Kazakhis versus Supersport is going to be very important. Gavin Hunt against his former employers, or well, he, I think he's got many teams who have former employers here in the league. Um, but it's 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 a way for him to get it around. I look at this Baroka FC and Black Leopards match as a as a as a as a as a, as a Limpopo derby. Uh, one way for Black Leopards to get themselves by their season back on track. Derbies are very tight; they can pull away with something. And then I look at Cape Town City and Morocco Swallows. Swallows have been drawing games. Cape Town City have been looking very all, all for all, all good uh, for the money over the past month in terms of scoring goals. And that's, that presents a very interesting and tasty clash. Oh, it's actually, it's not Ned Bank Cup. It's actually um, uh, the, uh, um, sorry, it's actually the uh, DSTV, it's the DSTV Premiership fixtures, just uh, sorting that out. Um what do you think of the of the fixtures uh, this weekend, Timan? man? Yeah, but you, you, the, 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 the game of the weekend is definitely Super Sport Matatanta Akopitori playing against Kaiser Chiefs. Super Sport United, a former club of Gavin Hunton, for he he took them to the glory land. He he, he won the the PSL three times with Super Sport United, three times in a row um, for, for Super Sport United. So he'll be going to his former employers. Um, in 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 in, in uh, Matatanda Akupitori, Kazuchis are playing Super Sport United at the wrong time. Paul. When they are struggling for goals, Samir Nekovic has only scored one goal in ever since coming back from his injury, and then they're playing up against the best goalkeeper in South Africa, Paul, in Ronald and Lily Williams, Paul. the best goalkeeper in South Africa at the moment. He he showed his cross in his in the last game against Cape Town City. Because she's the confidence is, is absolutely down at the moment in Paul. The team is not is not playing to the tune that they that we that we that we're accustomed to in Paul. They haven't uh, they haven't gotten a lot of good results in Paul. In terms of scoring goals, they are they, 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 it's almost a drought up front for them. In Paul. They did win three in a row earlier on and we really thought that they were really finding the rhythm. But unfortunately, Paul, ever since then they've they've lost and they have they've struggled to win in the last four games in Paul. Um, so Kazuchi are really playing Super Sport United at the wrong time. Super Sport United has been on a positive trajectory over the past few over the past few games, bar a couple of um, tough uh, fixtures where they couldn't uh, win um, against Morocco Swallows, where they drew, and also the loss in the Net Bank Cup. Before. But they, overall, they have been on a positive trajectory. So my pick for that game is Super Sport United. 
looking at the other games of the season the, uh, this weekend, um, the Sunday fixture, Morocco Solis up against Cape Town City. Uh, Morocco Solis will be, I mean, but the altitude, uh, I always say the altitude plays a very, very big role. Um, Solis going all the way down to Cape Town and Port. Solis is a team full of running, full of energy. Um, we, we know that very well in Port. They've got a lot of pacey players uh, in, in the form of Tibet, given Tibedi, Lebohan Mukwena, uh, Ruzik, Kamil Dean. So they're really going to attack Cape Town City. Cape Town City in Port, although they've had, they have a lot of talent at their disposal, they really haven't found their form this season. Um, like, uh, I wouldn't say that similar to Kansas Chiefs, but in this instance, they, they, at a le- to a lesser extent, they're not showing us the performances that we are accustomed to from them. So for my pick for that game is the Duba Bears, Morocco Solos. Okay. Um, I, I think I'll go... I, I'm not too sure. I think Suarez and Solos might end up drawing this game again. Um, they're really hard to break down, but I just have a sneaky feeling that it's going to be a score draw, like a 1-1. Uh, but if Cape Town City can manage to score two goals against the Solos team, they'll probably win this match. Um, yeah, look, I, look, it... It's it's going to be an interesting it's an interesting set of fixtures this week. Well, um, as far as, yes, as far as game this season, they haven't lost a game. So for you, you tipping them to lose a game against Cape Town City? I'm not. I said if Cape Town City can score two goals, then it 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 it, it, it could be Solos' game because Solos only just end up with one no wins or one one draws. It's it's not they don't they don't blow teams away with their attack. They're very compact. Um, at the, the very compact team, they they structured and 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 they attack on the counter, and it's normally a one goal win or a one one. It's never a two two or three two, or or, or blowout compared to Cape Town City, who are, are, are scoring at will right now, um, in in some cases. Um, and so yeah, look, I think it it might end up being a draw, uh, either nil nil or one one. But I do think if Cape Town, like if if you can try and get a second against Salos, um, you, you you've got a game there. Um, uh, T-Man, I think, do you have any final words for this week, uh, T-Man, uh, before we go off? No, but, um, just uh, as, as South African football, and it's always exciting. Um, it's great to see teams such as TTM really, really coming back with, in, in light of the new management and the new the new management structure. They're really coming and, and showing their talent. And, for, and it's so great to see Mamouli Sundowns put not putting their, their, their gas off the front table. And for, they are moving and for, like nobody's business. You see that you it's either you're coming and chasing me or, or not, Jim Boy. They, they're just moving from, from all cylinders. Um, I just hope yeah. that we, we continue seeing the mouth-watering fixtures that the PSL has shown us this season. Yeah, no, it's been quite entertaining. Yes, there are no fans in the stadium, but it's been a very entertaining season. And this weekend has presented five, excuse me, five mouth-watering clashes. So re- to everyone who's watching or listening uh, to the pod, uh, um, please uh, do enjoy this weekend of football team and you also enjoy your weekend um have a great time and we'll see you on the other side when we discuss the results of these games and the midweek games coming up this is Mpomutwani and Tabang Litero on the Mzansi Soccer Show um all I have to say is Lesale Kakahiso <laughs>